question five then from the 2015 New Hire Paper 1. Three mark question on just functions, but it's a very straightforward one. It gives you this simple little linear expression as the formula for this function, and it says what's its inverse. Get an expression for the inverse of that function, and there's a little bit part B. What's an expression for g of, or g acting on, its inverse, which is an obvious one really. Well, Inverse function. When it's as simple as this, you could just do it in your head. I'm not sure if you would if you would get the two marks just for stating the answer. I can't see that in the marking scheme because there's two marks for the result. But you can do that just by inspection, just by doing the inverse, just reversing the steps. Because after all, what does this say you do? It says you start with the number x. And in order to get the answer, the first thing you do is you multiply it by negative 2. And then the second thing you do is you add 6. And if you do that, that takes you. That's what G does. Following those steps, it takes you to the answer, which normally you would call Y. And the inverse would be, how do I get back again? That's the inverse. But notice, it doesn't want you to say what's the inverse in terms of feed in Y and get out X, because it, it wants the inverse as G inverse of X. But then x is just a placeholder for the numbers you're going in. You could call that any letter. Well, what would the reverse be? The reverse would be whatever you decide to start with, call it y, call it x, call it what you like. Whatever you start with, you do the opposite. So you could say straight away, whatever you want to call it, call it x. You do the opposite of that, which is take away 6. And then you do the opposite of that, which is divide by negative 2. And there you go. So I wouldn't leave it like that, I would tidy that up. I'd use the negative to reverse it. So I'd have 6 minus x over 2. But I don't see the statement just of the final result given as two marks without any working. So you'd probably start off by doing it this way. You'd say, well, what do we get for this? g of x, that's the result. Call that y. So y equals 6 minus 2x. And then proceed to solve that or to rearrange the subject of this to x. So that would be 2x equals 6 minus y. And then finally divided by 2, x equals 6 minus y upon 2. Which means you get your original number out if you feed your answer into this. So that's the expression for the answer. So the formula then for the inverse would be this little rule here, this expression. It just depends what you want to call it. You could call it g dashed of y, since it mentions y here. But in the question it says, find the inverse acting on x. Well, that's just a letter. That's just a placeholder. You could use any letter there, because it's just a rule that says, whatever you feed in, it will do 6 minus the thing you fed in over 2. And the two marks were, the first mark was for making this statement. And then the second mark was for getting the final formula. And it seems like they wanted it written down this way rather than just leaping straight into the answer. But as far as part B is concerned, that's obvious. If the function takes you to a certain number and the inverse undoes that, it takes you back to the number you start with. So when it says, write down an expression for G acting on the inverse of G, well, that must mean whatever you fed in it takes you to a number and that undoes it. Doesn't matter which direction you go in, whether it's G and then G inverse acts, or whether it's that one acting first and then this one acting second, it takes you back to where you start, whatever they've called that. Start at two, you finish at two, start at Y, you finish at Y, start at X, you finish at X. One mark.